We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. I want us to take this song. See me through, Lord Jesus, see me through, see me through, see me through. Lord Jesus, see me through. For there is a race, there is a race, a race I must run. There is a victory, there is a victory to be. there is a crown set before us that after this moment we will cross over and behold the beauty of your glory face to face Lord we therefore ask this moment that you come and speak to us teach us how to live strengthen those who are weak let our spirits revive in you again may your word come down with power and convince us, convert us once more, and draw us close and closer to yourself. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout hallelujah. The topic we are looking at today is comparing the present with the future of the believer. Comparing the present and the future of the believer. Are you a believer? Are there believers in the house? If you are a believer, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Comparing the present and the future of the believer. Who is a believer if we may start this way? A believer is somebody who has received Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. Heard the word of God some time ago, resolved to follow God, the person become, became convicted by the word the person heard, and convinced, and then converts. It did not end there. The person became born again, and then continues in the teaching and in the doctrine of the Lord. That is a believer. A believer is not somebody that said the sinner's prayer some time ago. The person goes back to the normal life. No. That is not the believer we are talking about today. A believer is not somebody who was also told that uh, because of your situation, there are big men, there are rich men in Katira. Go there, you will get help. And then the person comes here with that motive. No. A believer is not someone who is doing all the havoc in town. Person may be a cultist, person may be a criminal, but decide to come to hide in church. No, that is not what we are looking at as a believer today. The believer we are looking at today is somebody who is born again and is looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who is striving and being renewed after the image of Christ. Then we are looking at the present and the future. What is the present and the future? The present is the time we are living in now. There are time on earth. Then the future is the time after this life, after lifetime. After now, how is it going to be? Let's look at our Bible. Romans chapter 8. We'll read verses 18 and 22. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. The world is full of troubles. Those who even pass through the trouble most are Christians. Jesus did not sugarcoat the gospel when he came and gave us the word which we call good news today. He told us that because of me, on account of me, people are going to persecute you. They will bring you before governors, before kings. Some of you, they will throw out of the synagogue. They are going to persecute you. In fact, when they persecute you, you want, in one time, run to another, flee to another place. Continue to spread the word. If you look at the story of the three would-be disciples, they came to Jesus at different times. Lord, we want to follow you. Jesus did not pretend. In fact, he told one that, listen, forces, the forces, they have holes where they hide. The birds of the air, they have nests. In the nighttime, they have somewhere to hide themselves. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay down his head. Nowhere. Jesus did not tell us that immediately we accept him, everything is going to be okay. Is that what the gospel is to you? He told us that they are going to persecute us. So the present time is a time of groaning. It's a time of suffering. But the passage we just read, Paul here is saying that we can't compare this, the suffering of this moment, the groaning and the pains, we can't compare it with the glory that God has bestowed before us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. There is a crown that is prepared before us. But we have to suffer a little while. Paul said, he, was, he wrote to Timothy, he said, fight as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a soldier of the Lord, now is a time to fight. This is a time to suffer pain. This is a time to suffer persecution. A lot of us today don't want to suffer. Unfortunately, when some people meet with dangers, they quickly drop their cross and run for their lives. It is in Christianity I discover that soldiers could go to war and live their lives at home. They go to war. Hey, we are soldiers marching to the war in the name of Jesus. We shall do what? Can we sing this song? We are soldiers marching to the war in the name of Jesus. We shall conquer. But this same war that we have been called to fight, we do see some believers once they meet with barrenness, once they meet with danger, once they meet with death, some when they meet with poverty, they turn back. So we say, I beg, I beg, I beg. I'm not after that one. Uh, somebody sang a song. I go get near you, be. I get near fi me be go. I go get near care fi. I go get near care fi me galome. Let me interpret. He said, "They know they serve God, they poor. That they serve God, they rich." It's correct. It's correct. But a true soldier of Jesus Christ will say, whether in life or in death, in poverty or in riches, we will do what? We will serve the Lord. Enough of some of these exaggerated prosperity messages. In fact, they make my heart and my belly sick sometimes. The Bible did not tell us that Everything is going to be okay when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And right here, Paul is telling us that this time there is suffering. But we have to endure. Patience is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Patience is one of the fruits. The same God who performs miracles. Some is 
instant miracles. The same God too will wait and watch our faith. How we would respond to some challenges. Praise the Lord. Living souls, praise the Lord. In this world and in Christianity, we see some people that will say, Ah, oh, once I have money, eh? Once I become a millionaire, all my troubles are over. Once I have children, once I get married, all the troubles will be over. In fact, that is when I will serve God well. It's a lie, oh. It's a lie. Ask big men whether since they had money, everything became okay. Ask mothers and fathers of children whether since they had their children, everything became okay. In fact, once you become rich, you are succeeding in promoting yourself to another class of receiving certain troubles. There are some people, I was talking with someone, I think last week, yes, last week. He was saying, we were in his office, we were working, and it was late. So I was telling him, I don't stay late to this time. He said, ah, sometimes I will stay till 11 o'clock in this office, and I will go home. I said, you? <laughs> 11 o'clock in the night and go home give this man the next five years if he has like 100 million naira in his account he will never work in the night because he will become afraid of kidnappers so we think that this world is for enjoyment in fact if there is anybody that has ever enjoyed life in this world is Solomon, no? Solomon. Do you know Solomon? The wisest man that ever lived. Solomon enjoyed life. Is it women? 700 wives, 300 concubines. And we have 365 days and 366 days, as in the case of Philippia, in a year. That means, even for a year, your turn may not come as a woman. But this man looked at the whole of the life and he said, vanity upon vanity, all is what? All is vanity. Read the book of Ecclesiastes very well. In fact, it's one of my best books in the Bible because a lot of us have been carried away. We think that uh, once we have a headache, we take paracetamol and the headache did not go. The next minute is find ourselves in the house of a false prophet. We want to know who is our problem. Today, miracles have carried a lot of people away. How many people still think about heaven? This suffering that's supposed to prepare us for eternity. These sufferings are the ones that are taking us away from eternity. May the Lord deliver his church in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. How many of us value Eternity, more than the life we live now. More than the life we live today. How many of us value eternity? Because of the affairs of this life, a lot of people have been carried away. In fact, someone was saying, we went for a street interview and we interviewed a woman, a Christian. Should a boy and a girl have sex when they are not married? Oh, Taking a woman to the altar straight. Taking a man to the altar straight. No premarital sex first. How possible is it? The woman said, well, uh, the way life has become today, they should do it first though. They should not go straight. Because you may enter the marriage and find yourself that there is no way back. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what? Because of, you see, we see a lot of, People who are barren, some have a problem in their sexual life in marriage, and people are afraid. Afraid. People want to satisfy the things of this life first and forget about eternity. At the expense of eternal life, people are living their lives to get instant joy in this world. A lot of us are being carried away into the world, comparing. The present with the future of the believer. Is there anything so special in this world that we are even enjoying? Tell me, 
What is it? Is it the best meal? Best food? Once you eat the food, in the morning, give yourself like 24 hours. Where will you find the food? In this world of Boko Haram, in this world of ISIS, Akada, in this world of suicide bombing, somebody could be sitting close to you and drinking like a sera in a bus, eating gala in a bus. You may not even know. It may not even occur to you that there is bomb all over the person. Trying to blow somebody up. Is there anything so special to enjoy in this world? In those days, when ice fish, frozen fish came, it was for the poor people now. Is it not poor people that were buying ice fish? In those days, and people could hide and be pricing ice fish. How much for this ice fish? And today, even I see people, big men with their jeeps and limousine, they will pack and buy ice fish. This world of ice fish, this ice fish world, is it because of this world that we want to kill ourselves? Times have changed. The world we used to enjoy, the world is fading away. And what I'm trying to make somebody understand is this. This world is a world of suffering. This is a world that an only child who is a graduate could come from school and then people will be celebrating and one day come and say, Mama, you suffered for me all this while, oh. I've managed to graduate and thank God I've gotten an appointment. Then that widow could lose that only child. That is the world we are living in. Life itself is not fair. But in heaven, everything shall be fair. Because there will be no fool and he has men there. All those people who give you trouble in your company, they will not enter. Which is a wizard, they will not enter. Everything is going to be beautiful there. But we must strive to enter into it. So people have given up their faith. Probably because of losing a loved one. But to God, there is nothing like gone too soon to God. Nothing like gone too soon. If I Jesus live about three, 33 years and died, and he was happy living, he was happy because he finished his work before he left. When Stephen was to be killed, Stephen looked up and saw heaven open. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So he was not even bothered about the things of this world. There is a way you become con con consumed by the thoughts of heaven. That even somebody taking your property may not be a problem to you anymore. I said it in the morning, so let me just say it now. I hope you are aware that uh, one of our reverend's wife passed on, eh? Mrs. Ruth Umukoro. I met someone this past week, and he was offended. He was saying, eh, God is not fair. Why must God do that? A servant of God, the wife just died like that. Why? And he was saying that uh, Juju worshippers, they have maximum protection from the devil. Why will God not protect his children? A hymn writer says, Judge not the Lord with feeble sense. Feeble sense. God always knows everything he's doing. If at me, I know I'm a soldier of Christ and I prepare for death. All the time. Anytime, anyhow, provided I go to that place. That is my own. You can be praying, I shall not die, I shall not die. You shall die, oh. You will die. Or will you go back to your, are you going back to your mother's womb? You will. We are all going to the grave. To the grave. It is the destination of every flesh in this world. Our prayer is that we should not die before our time. But anyhow, anyhow, we will die. 
But just as we have, we have grace to live, we should also ask God for grace to die well. Because even Stephen, Jesus, when they were to die, they said, into your hand, I commit what? I commit my spirit. That is the most important thing, you know. Do you know that before the sickness became very serious, I had a dream. Okay, then the sickness uh, was serious, but she was improving. She improved so much. So I had a dream. And in the dream, they wore her white and white, preparing her for baptism. Mrs. Sumukoro, the late one. So I met the vicar and I told her, I said, Daddy, the dream I had, I don't like this dream. Oh, this person is baptized. I saw her in a dream. They wore her white. So Daddy asked me, when did you have this dream? I said, is it, is, is it long ago? I said, no, it's now. He said, she is improving so well, oh. So since then, my heart became divided. It was divided. I knew that the way they wore her white, God was preparing her for her day. The day she died, they woke all the priests up and uh, Vicar told me the money that he didn't want to disturb me, that he wanted me to have my rest. That morning, I had a dream. I did not know that she had gone home. I had a dream. They brought a baby. The whole of the baby's body was white. The baby had gone. I mean, dead. So they brought the baby to Vika to pray for. I was passing by, going to the lady shop. I was saying, why would they bring this baby that is far gone to Vika to pray for? This baby is gone. Now look at the body. The body is white. When I got up, that morning, they now told me that she had passed on. It did not end there. The following night, I had another dream. I was in the altar. It was like Vika was engaged and he told me, Hosanna, uh, be celebrating the Holy Communion. Before the Holy Communion, I was preaching. I was standing in the altar and I was preaching to people. I was telling them it was a funeral service. But the casket was not here. The cup was not here. But people came, and I was telling them, there is no need to cry. There is no need. This does not call for tears and mourning. I did not know the person that died anyway, but it was a funeral service. When I woke up, I gave glory to God, because I know that clearly these revelations are pointed to one thing, that Mrs. Ruth had gone home to rest. There is nothing like gone too soon in the sight of God. God knows what he is doing. He knows. As at when I had terrible accident and people thought I was gone. In fact, a woman was telling my mother in the market, said, the accident they had, the boy just died flat. And the woman described the place, was telling my mother the story. After everything, my mother now said, that guy is my son. He's alive. He says, is he alive? He said yes. Sometimes, when people pass on, God has his own will in their lives. In this case, I believe, even with these revelations, God prepared her for eternity. The question is, are you preparing for eternity? Somebody has died for us, has paid the price. I tell people, that there is no amount of good that we do that qualifies us from heaven. No amount of good qualifies us to enter heaven. Because our goodness is not enough. Jesus has paid the price. He said, I am going to prepare a place for you. Where I will be. There you will do what? There you will be also. Our future is glorious. The future of the believer is a very glorious one. Here we have troubles for a time. But our future is just too glorious. I remember the story of people who have tasted death. And God said, go back. For instance, the experience of Paul. That he said, whether in the body or out of the body, I did not know. Some people have been taken out of the body. 
And they saw the beauty of heaven. And when they saw, they will say, me, I'm not going back. Oh, I will stay here. Go back to where? Go to Nigeria, where you are watching, uh, enjoying yourself, doing entertainment, and then Nepal will just take light. In this coffin of generator, eh, we are all the generators in the world. They import them to Nigeria when we have where we have everything to generate light. Go back to where God, I will stay here. I'm not going back. Who oh, we go back? Even me that is talking now. If God says, Come. Before he finishes saying, Come, me, I will go. I will not ask him for extra one second to prepare. No, I will go. I, I was talking one day, we were in the Bible study some years ago. And then I said, um, uh, I prayed one prayer this morning. I prayed the prayer and I've prayed it again today that, uh, God, if you know I will backslide tomorrow, take my life today. And somebody where a pastor became offended. He was saying, uh, Hosanna, you see the way you talk? Marry, you say you will not marry. If you had married, will you talk like this? If you have children who are telling you, Daddy, go come, oh, we are expecting you. He said, will you open your mouth to talk about that like this? What does the Bible say? A man's life does not consist in what he possesses. Some of us have not been able to separate our lives from our properties. So it's difficult for us to serve God well. The Bible says, He who loses his life for my sake shall have it. But he who values his life so much and decides to hide it from me, that person shall do what? Shall lose it. How many of us are thinking of the life after now? Don't be carried away. I know that we have a place we are going to. Don't be discouraged. It doesn't matter what we face in this world. There is a beautiful home where our Lord shall tell us, well done, good and faithful servant. If you are living in sin, please repent. Heaven is not for Christians who have become righteous on their own. But heaven is for people, sinners, who are ready to repent and are repenting every day and are walking towards repentance. Once they fall, they rise, they continue to move. There is no that is righteous. But let us try. Look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us forget about these things in the world. When we die, we will leave our houses, we will leave our children, we will leave everything. Let us build our treasure in heaven. And the good Lord that we serve will help us to make this heaven in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet as we pray. Our Father and God, we want to say thank you. We ask that this glorious place you have prepared for us, Help us to get there. May we not be discouraged. May we not be distracted. We know our present, our present time is embedded in troubles and tribulations. But the world to come is glorious. Help us to attain through your grace and power. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.